Cancer and the Fallout universe. In a world filled with radiation, I think we should talk about it. Does it exist in what forms and my unique perspective as a cancer survivor? So don't forget to follow my social medias, drop a like on this video, and without further ado, let's get into it. Now, of course, we know that cancer does exist in the Fallout universe, but I figured we'd cover it today because it's Adolescent and Young Adult Cancer Awareness Week. Now, this is anybody under the age of 39 to teens, not kids. That's another Awareness Week. And I have a unique perspective on this because, as I said, I'm a cancer survivor. I had ovarian cancer in 2021. It was treated surgically. It was brutal, hard, really difficult journey. This is pictures from 2021, and this picture is from like last week. My scar is doing a lot better. I'm doing a lot better. But let's cover this topic because I think I bring, bring a unique perspective to it. So, of course, cancer does exist before and after the bombs are dropped in the Fallout universe. You can see on this DC Journal of Internal Medicine that there are a bunch of lists of different things that this covers, and cancer is on this list, as well as sex glands and allergies. Super important stuff. You can also hear um, some institute scientists chatting about how it would be great if uh, they had to find a cure for cancer, which clearly they haven't. So it's obviously something that is still a concern in the wasteland, obviously, um, and that they are working towards. So it totally exists and is canon in this universe. It's primarily mentioned in the more modern Fallout games, Fallout 3, New Vegas, and 4, and 76, but we, we have implications of it in previous games too. Now, generally, if something is addressed as a terminal disease with a tumor involved, I'm going to consider that cancer just for the purposes of the rest of this video. It could be debatable if, if that is or is not cancer. I think it's interesting the way cancer is handled overall in this game. There is supposedly a cure to cancer in uh, Germantown. We have a lot of villainous characters who have cancer. And of course, we're in a world filled to the brim with radiation. So cancer would arguably be a big concern. But it's interesting to note too that there's references to people who are diagnosed with cancer in Fallout 76 prior to the bombs dropping. And then after the bombs drop, some of them seemingly go into remission or survive. Um, Obviously, they don't have the diagnostic criteria that we would have nowadays. There's not a way to know exactly, like, do you, you can't get a PET scan in the wasteland. You can't go get a, you know, blood work done is a lot more limited, things like that. But people who are given terminal diagnosis are surviving in the wasteland. And some of them have attributed that to the actual radiation found in the wasteland, which I think is a really interesting concept to explore. Obviously, the radiation by and large would probably cause cancer as opposed to cure it. But hey, it's a video game and it's fiction. So why not have that idea in the game? That would be nice. Um, <laughs> I think that's just a really cool element. Now, Fallout 76 has a considerable amount of the total amounts of references to cancer of all of the video games, which I thought was interesting. Obviously, we read a lot of people's notes and holotapes and things like that in the games, and that gives us a lot more details on their lives to the point where people actually have specific diagnoses that we see in the game, like leukemia and different types of cancer in more detail. There's also residents slowly dying of cancer, and a lot of residents in Fallout 76 presumably got cancer when the bombs were dropped and after, but we have a few instances where that's like documented and people got cancer during the dropping of the bombs and then passed away later. That makes sense if you know anything about cancer or if you've read anything like perhaps the commission report on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, cancer deaths were one of the largest deaths that occurred after the dropping of those bombs or if you look on the any of the readings like um midnight in chernobyl is a great book if you want to read about chernobyl incidents and radiation in that regard cancer was a big one and obviously like burning of the skin and things like that so radiation would be considerable concern 
for the people of the wasteland. And I think it's logical. And I don't think that they're doing any wrong by putting that into the game. I think it's an important thing to address because it is an environmental concern and a carcinogen, obviously. Now we have a couple of other references in Fallout 4 and a few references in Fallout 3. A notable one would be the Overseer of Vault 108, um, the Gary Vault, passed away of cancer <laughs> or was supposed to get it within 40 or die within 40 months of the vault existing. Um, I think Fallout Universe does something a little shady here. And that's where we move into my takes on how they handle cancer overall in the franchise. And I gotta say, I'm not a huge fan as a survivor myself, as cancer being a driving factor and plot point in the descent of evil characters in the game. Now, this doesn't happen once, but it happens twice. And I guess you could argue that Overseers of Vaults having cancer potentially adds to that. But I'm going to focus on the two big tumor kings. I'm going to call them. I can call them that. I've had cancer. <laughs> and we have tumor king one, number one right here. And that is Caesar. And Caesar has a brain tumor. It's referenced throughout the game. It's a major plot point and without life-saving intervention via an auto dock and the courier just being a champion <laughs> at brain surgery for some reason, um, Caesar will pass away due to, to the disease, leaving a void for Caesar's legion and, you know, plot, plot, plot of that game. But I think that's interesting that they chose to give um, Caesar a brain tumor as a big driving factor in his character arc and character development and choices for the courier. Also, they get to do that quest, eh, tumor, brute, you know, the eh, tumor. That's a funny joke. Okay, I get it. That's a great reference to Julius Caesar. You probably can't hear the clapping because of the microphone, but I'm clapping for you, Obsidian. Funny joke, cancer survivor approved. Stamp it on there. Good joke. Um, but other than that joke, I'm not a huge fan of using the cancer as an evil thing. Now, granted, Fallout New Vegas was the first game to have like a major villain have this big disease and use it as a driving factor in the game. But so I'll give Caesar a pass. But where I get hung up on is the next game in the series having the same exact thing. I guess it's not in the series because New Vegas is, you know, not as sequential. It's not Fallout 4 and it's its own thing. But again, the game that came after Fallout New Vegas was Fallout 4 and the major villain, depending on how you see it, I think, objectively, even if you do play for the Institute, he is the villain, right? I like the Institute. He's definitely still the villain. More cancer of our major villain. And very similar either way this guy passes away i mean you could pew pew him or he could just die naturally of the tumor he is a super advanced stage of cancer whereas i believe caesar probably has maybe stage one or two brain cancer or per, you know maybe three i would probably guess one or two just because it was more treatable with surgery solid cell solid tumors are often treated with surgery i had a solid tumor as opposed to a non-solid tumor like leukemias things like that which are more often treated with different interventions but yeah it makes sense that as long as you could get clear margins you could treat this guy so it, clearly the like logic cancer wise is there solid well done y'all but, like, why we gotta give the villains the cancer every time? Like, cancer isn't a trait in someone that makes them evil. <laughs> so, I really hope that the next Fallout game doesn't have a older male with some kind of incurable cancer or disease as his main point. Like, he's he, there's gonna be a void in power. The main character has to take over. It doesn't need... It doesn't need to be a tumor, guys. It doesn't need to be. I mean do it for the joke don't do it again <laughs> but that's my perspective as a survivor i try and look at things with like a positive spin because cancer sucks as is and you know i want i want a better de depiction in a video game to be honest with you but overall i'm not beefing i think both of these games are solid the a tumor joke is hilarious obsidian 
well done. Um, but I really do hope that Fallout 5 doesn't have a cancer patient as the male lead to a evil faction that will make him die and then leave a void in power where you have to make decisions. Let's write something new, right? <laughs> Um, I think it would be interesting, too, now that we have, like, diseases in Fallout games that you can contract, specifically Fallout 76, and it would be interesting, like, what if the Courier or Soul Survivor or whomever would have been able to get cancer? How would that affect the gameplay? Like, I'd kind of like to see that in future games, albeit it would be so triggering for me. <laughs> but, you know, it is something to consider. There is a lot of radiation out there. And obviously this would be a long-term concern for people of the wasteland. But that's my take as a cancer survivor. I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comments. And also, on a more serious note, if you're having any medical issues or any concerns or anything like that, reach out to your local clinic, doctor, whomever, parent, whatever, and go get yourself checked out. That is, early detection is key in surviving cancer. It's scary as all hell, I won't lie to you, but you, you should go to the doctor. I did, and it saved my life. All right, you have been watching Tunnel Snakes Fool, that's me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and stay safe in the wasteland, kids.